Good morning. I'm Professor Elizabeth Prodromo, and it's good to be with you this morning. I've been teaching here at the Fletcher School since 2014. I'm the faculty director of the Initiative on Religion, Law and Diplomacy, RLD, and I encourage those of you interested in understanding the relevance of religion and contemporary international relations in the social sciences and in policymaking and practitioner work to come join the initiative on our various projects. This course today that I'm talking with you about is Religion and Conflict in International Relations, D207. I come to the course as a hybrid, as someone with academic, diplomatic, policy and practitioner experience in the study of religion and conflict, in religion and geopolitics, and in religion, religious freedom, human rights, and democratization. And it's that experience that shapes the foundational challenge questions in this course. Now, the main problematic in the course uh, is how to understand the relationship between religion and conflict in international relations. So what's the religion conflict nexus? How do we make sense of that? For a long time, the, the dominant, the hegemonic approaches, both in the academic study and in policy and practitioner work on religion and IR had really long been reduced to two options. Either the first option, the presence, participation and impacts of religion in international relations were inevitably a source of conflict, violence, disruption, anti-modernity. So that religion is a force that has to be controlled by states and marginalized from IR practice. The second way of thinking about the study of religion and conflict has been that religion, because of its basic incompatibility with and hostility to secular and modern forces that are intrinsic to historical change, religion would inevitably decline in vitality and would disappear from public life into the private sphere. So we don't really need to take account of religion in the world today. So our course takes a critical look at these two approaches, call them the first, the control approach, and the second, the ignore or overlook approach. Neither of these really stands up to the empirical evidence. And that's what we're getting at in unpacking this religion conflict nexus. Because after all, religion is part of the world around us. Uh, we see it everywhere in state, sub-state, uh, interstate relations, multilateral relations, and most scholar practitioners in IR today recognize this to be true, that religion is a salient in international relations today. So we're gonna work to develop religious literacy when it comes to understanding the relationship between religion and conflict. More specifically, we wanna understand under what circumstances and because of what causal factors religion either contributes to conflict or violence or alternatively, whether religion prevents conflict or contributes to sustainable peace building and stability in international relations. Now, how do we do this? Well, we're going to first evaluate the really intellectually rich, exciting, highly contested literature on secularization, desecularization, post-secularization, and modernity. All of this jargon, we're gonna to try to make sense of that. We're also going to look at the relationship between religion and state, understood in terms of the formative moment of Westphalia in 1648. We're going to consider constitutional and legal arrangements that uh, manage and create the possibilities for religion in the public sphere. We're also going to consider the relationship between religion and other forms of collective identity, including nationalism. We're going to consider how religion contributes to or impedes democratic values, norms, and practices, and especially individual rights and freedoms and equality before the law, equality before the state and rule of law. And then we're going to look at economic development priorities of equity and where religion may figure into those. Finally, we're gonna take a look at religious diplomacy and soft power and human rights and international religious freedom. In other words, we're going to do a kind of tour de terrain, a tour of the terrain when it comes to ways of thinking, studying, analyzing religion and international relations 
and more specifically the religion conflict nexus. We're also intrinsically and necessarily going to ex uh, deconstruct the term religion. We wanna be precise in how we use the term to understand the religion conflict nexus. So we're gonna look at religion in terms of ideas, institutions and organizations and leaders and practices. We look at the dynamism and the change and the contestation within religion understood that way. And we wanna see then how this affects conflict or peace. We'll be using a series of case studies, very broad in geographic scope and thematic focus to explore the religion conflict nexus. And we're gonna give particular attention to cases that have been characterized either as religious conflicts or conflicts caused by religion. And we're gonna take a critical analytic approach to this characterization in order to determine how accurate or erroneous that characterization is. Now, going back to where I began, I mentioned that I'm a hybrid. Um, I'm a scholar practitioner, scholar policymaker, scholar diplomat. So I'm gonna draw on a fantastic network of scholars, policymakers, and practitioners, many of them hybrids as well, who live and practice in both the academic and applied operational spaces to bring them into our class so that you'll have an opportunity to engage directly with individuals who can help us analyze the religion conflict nexus. In terms of requirements, uh, our virtual reality is one that lends itself, I think, best to a mix of different kinds of assignments. So we'll have a couple of op-eds, uh, we'll have some shared reading presentations, and then there's a semester long project that you can do at your own pace that's built around your tracking a particular religion conflict case. Again, critically understood uh, with a final very concise analytic write-up of the case that you select. You'll do research on that and you'll speak to experts associated with that that case in order to do a write-up at the end of the course. I look forward to seeing you, and meanwhile, I wish you all a healthy, restful winter break.